Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase a little example I've created using Duck Compose, where we set up a Spring Boot backend, which is then connected to a MySQL database. Uh, this was specifically requested in a comment where we are going to be using Spring Boot with Gradle, where we would normally use Maven. But the setup is very similar, and both things would actually work with this setup. But firstly, I'm just going to quickly showcase our Spring Boot application. We then have the connection to Spring Boot. Dockerized, we then have our MySQL, and we're then going to run our entire application. So first, let me quickly showcase, we have Spring Boot set up, and it's set up with Gradle. Doesn't matter too much, but main difference, we're going to have a build.gradle file where we have some dependencies. We most importantly have our Spring Boot dependencies, and we then have a MySQL connector allowing us to actually use MySQL. Inside our Spring Boot application, it's a very simple setup. We have a controller, which is kind of like providing an endpoint. So we have a REST endpoint in this case, providing some basic use information from an ID. This is then connected to a service, which then in this case doesn't have too much domain logic, but then connects to a repository, which is then going to be connected to our database, where we can then provide some, in this case, JPA queries, or, for example, in this case, getting the user by ID. So relatively simple, it's going to be linked in the description to the entire project if you want to have a closer look to the Spring Boot project, but that's to just a fit. We have a REST endpoint, which then through some layers in the end connect to the database. And we have this entity called employee, which is then going to be matching a table in our database, as we will see shortly. But that is the general setup of our Spring Boot application. To then actually connect to the database, we are using a properties folder or property file inside a resource folder called application test properties, where we have the specific data source connected to our database. So GDBC, the type MySQL, the IP, which in this case is going to be the name of the Docker container, which is going to be called MySQL, which is going to be our database, the IP and the name of the database. In this example, I'm then just simply going to be using the root user to log into our database which have default username root and password password, which we're going to define in our token post file and some properties defining our own dialect being MySQL. And that is mainly our Spring Boot setup. So then actually build our Spring Boot container. We have a Docker file, which is then simply running from an Eclipse Timron base, like Java image. We set a working directory. We copy the jar file from our build libs position. And one thing to note, because we're using Gradle this time, I would use Gradle to then first clean the project. When any changes have been made that need to be put into the container and then build to then rebuild this build folder containing our jar file. This jar file is then simply copied into our container and we're then simply using java-jar after jar to run the jar file which will then start our Spring Boot application. And that is basically the Spring Boot setup. We then have our Docker Compose file, which is where we both connect to our Docker file for our Spring app, but also where we have our connection or our setup for our database. So we have these two services as mentioned, our Spring Boot app, which is very simply just built from our current Docker file, and then port forwards our port 8080 from our Spring Boot project to localhost, allowing us to actually connect to our setup in this case and test endpoint. And it's going to be depending on our MySQL service. So we can't start our Spring app before our MySQL service has started. It still has some problems, kind of, because the MySQL service might be started, but the database might not be ready. So we might have the Spring app kind of fail a few times before it establish a connection. But for our MySQL service, we are running from a base image MySQL 8 from Docker Hub. We are setting that we are going to be using a password more or less. We're going to be restarting if we fails. We're going to be setting some environment variables. We're going to set a database. So our database is going to be created automatically. And we're then going to set the password for our root user as password, which then matches what we saw earlier in our application properties. We then also have a few volumes which is more or less binding or sending or connecting data from outside the container to inside the container. So first of all, we are sending an init.sql file 
into the Docker entry point in a db.d folder with the same name. And this init SQL file is then automatically going to be run because it's in this specific folder. And this init SQL file is then simply going to be using our company database created by docompose or created by the container by injecting this environment variable into it. And it's then simply going to be creating an employees table and inserting some simple employees information, which is then going to be occurring later on. And because the IDs are going to be automatically generated by the database based on our SQL, as we can see here, it's also incrementing. We should be able to extract of ID 1, John, and ID 2, John, Jane Smith. So then actually persist data in MySQL, I have also created a empty, for now, data folder, which is this folder at this position. I'm on Windows, sadly. And it's then going to be connected to the var lib MySQL inside the container, meaning the smallest where we would persist the data on the con inside the container. It's then going to be bound to this specific data folder, allowing us to then more or less send all the data inside this folder, meaning if we close, if we made any changes to the database and then close this container and started it back up, it would not restart, but it would get the data from this data folder. One thing to note in this case, we're not really going to be testing or showcasing it, and we would have some issues where this would be rerun. So we would need to change that a bit to be create table if not existing, and this should probably not be inserting every time. But for this demo, it's I'm just gonna keep it simple. And we would then simply be able to kind of like have the data be persisted between sessions if for some reason need to restart our database. And last but not least, we are opening a port for our MySQL database. We're both gonna be have an open container port, which is actually gonna be the one connecting to our Spring app, or our Spring app is gonna be using this port. But but I'm just hoping to local host, doesn't matter. We could also just do, um, this is a bit unnecessary, but it might be good to have if you're doing some kind of like local host testing to check if the database is up and running and you might have some issues, but it's a bit unnecessary. But I'm just going to keep it in anyways. So that is the basic setup. Let's actually have a look at running everything. And because we're using Docker Compose, it's actually very, very simple. We don't need to do any kind of manual builds or setups, the only thing we need to ensure is that we have the newest jar file built inside our build folder. And I will then simply go into any kind of terminal. And from this position, so I'm on a window, so it's not too pretty, but from this base root, we should be able to have access to our Docker post file. We can then either do Docker compose up, then automatically going to be building if it's not already existing and then starting both our services. If we just want to build first, we can do Docker Compose build and then Docker Compose up. Or if you already, it's going to be very fast because I have like pre built these stuff to test everything works, but it would take a few seconds for you guys the first time. And one thing to note often I would just use Docker Compose up. And if you then want to do Docker Compose up, and rebuild if anything has changed you can do up dash dash build it will then update if anything is needed to be updated but if i then do docker compose up dash dash build or just docker compose up in this case it will take some time the first time again ensuring everything is ready and, and built so it's going to be building and running and i'm just going to give it a few seconds and then i'm going to back and about here we go Go. So now we should see this greenish blue one is going to be the Spring Gradle MySQL. And our Spring Gradle Spring Boot is going to be the yellow one. So notice first the Spring Boot starts, or MySQL starts, then the Spring Boot start. But because it takes some time for MySQL to like actually start up the database inside the container, it's going to be running a few processes. And we see here, because we get some exceptions from the Spring app, that it's not able to establish a connection because the Spring Boot or the MySQL container is not ready yet. But at some point, we could do it more pretty. This is not the pretty way. The pretty way is doing some kind of waiting, more waiting mechanism or maybe adding some kind of delay for the Spring Boot. But these new versions automatically just reestablish a connection when the database is ready, so it doesn't matter too much. But as we can see here, at some point, our database is ready for connections.
And if I open something like Postman, I should now be able to go through my main Java controller. And you can see in here we have this on localhost slash user slash ID. And we know that our users is going to be John Doe and Jane Smith. So if we now try to extract localhost port 8080 slash user slash one, we can also see here that now we get some information from our Spring app. More or less, it connects to the database because it haven't established a connection yet. But because now we try to extract some information, it's going to reestablish a connection. And this time, the database is up and running. So it connects, it starts, extracts information, and we get and do. And if we want to, we get Jane Smith. So it works. We have established a connection all the way through. And just for all the Docker lovers, let's have a closer look at the actually running containers. We can here see our two containers running for a few minutes. We're exposing the ports and it's nice and running. And again, everything is quite simple with our compose. If we had some issues in here, I could like force a shutdown and everything should stop running. And I can now simply just do the compose up once again to restart everything. And it should actually only take, see the containers actually start very fast. And once again, the main thing we're going to be waiting on is actually the setup of the startup of our MySQL database. But still, everything should be able to run and start actually quite fast. And again, as mentioned, there's a lot of moving parts in this setup and a lot of things going on. So I will leave a link in the description to a GitHub repository where you can actually see the entire project. And you should be able to just simply actually pull this project and just do token posts up and everything should just work. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this relatively quick showcase of a token post setup of my SQL and Spring Boot using Gradle. Doesn't matter too much in this case, but it's here. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful 